While shopping for our current boat, Barefoot Gal, Dave and I learned a lot about how a seller should make their boat attractive and position it to sell to prospective buyers. We also saw a number of things that were big no-nos. Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I share tips that everyone should take to heart if they're selling their boat. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Infinity, the most trusted name in wool and vinyl flooring in the marine industry. Since 2008, Infinity has offered boat owners premier flooring options proven to withstand even the most demanding environments. Each of their products is equipped with UV-stable fade resistance and antimicrobial technology, giving them both durability and style that can't be matched. Thinking about kicking carpet to the curb? Make the switch to Infinity and see the difference that true luxury makes. Visit InfinityLWV.com and use the coupon code BG20, that's BG20, for 10% off any area rug. Limit one per customer. Okay, so let's talk tips for selling a boat. Well, the first thing to realize is that almost every search is initially conducted online. The photos and descriptions there are what are going to make someone call or come visit. And for people like Dave and I, who live 500 to 1,000 miles or more from a boat, we really want to have a feel for a particular boat before we commit to the time and money involved in a visit. My belief is that 100% honesty and transparency is best in listing a boat. Yes, you want to present it in the best light, but you don't want to trick somebody into thinking it's something it's not. What's important isn't getting hundreds of people to look at the boat. It's getting the one right person to look at it. Good, accurate, inviting photos and a detailed description of the boat will do it. If you're planning to work with a broker, start by looking at the broker's listings. Are they well presented? Do the photos make the boat look inviting? Is the information complete? If you don't like how the broker is showing other boats, don't use him or her for your own boat. There is no reason to believe that they will do a better job for you. No matter how personable they are, if the online listings aren't appealing, no one will visit in person. On the other hand, if you're planning to sell the boat yourself, Spend some serious time, like four or five hours at least, looking at listings online. Make a note of what's included in listings that you like. It doesn't matter if you actually like the boat, just whether you like how it's presented. Pay attention to how the photos are staged and how descriptions are worded. What makes some listings stand out? How can you apply those lessons to your boat? Next, Begin by decluttering and depersonalizing the boat. Prospective purchasers want to imagine themselves on the boat, and so removing your family photos, the kids' drawings, and so on will go a long ways. I know, it's hard. You're taking the first step to making it not yours. Now to take the pictures, use a camera with an ultra-wide angle lens, not a fisheye, but one specifically designed for small spaces without distortion. This is what separates great boat pictures from the merely good, the ability to get much more of each room in the photo. This will make the boat look that much more roomy. Using a typical point and shoot or cell phone camera just won't do justice to your boat. A good broker should have a good camera and know how to use it. If you're doing your own, Ask friends who are into photography if they have the necessary equipment and might be willing to do the photos for you. Or think of hiring someone. Pick a nice sunny day for the photos. The sunlight coming in through the ports and hatches will make the boat look that much better. If you're living on the boat or it's being stored, there's probably a certain amount of clutter on the boat. But the photos don't have to reflect that. 
Clear each area of the boat as photos are being taken. Never, ever let the broker just take photos without you being there to do that. Yes, it is a lot of work, but the boat will show so much better. A prospective buyer wants to see the V-berth, not five bags of sales, three PFDs, and whatever else is laying on the V-berth. Now, some people and brokers like to stage the photos with linens on the table and dishes, pots on the stove, and so on. I'm not a fan of this, as I want to see exactly what's there. But I do know that it's a personal issue. You'll have to decide for yourself. Take lots of photos. 50 to 100 is not unreasonable, as some won't turn out well. 30 or more in the actual listing is not unusual. And if you're using something like sailboatlistings.com or Craigslist, where the number of photos is limited, remember that you can have a stack of others to email to interested parties. However, don't make all of these pictures being of the same items, just different angles. Use close-ups of all electronics. Avoid the temptation to use professional photos from the manufacturer. People want to see the actual boat being sold. Frankly, I get furious over sister ship pictures when I'm looking. Show lots of different angles and different close-ups versus long shots and so forth. Take some from the dock, take them from different areas on board, and so on. That's what's going to make your boat listing stand out from others. And look at the pictures as you take them to make sure that they are sharp, totally in focus, and that you don't have stuff in them such as a power cord hanging down through the center of a picture, or books and eyeglasses on the nav station, a dirty glass in the nav sink, makeup on the counter in the head, whatever. Also, make sure that there is nothing in the pictures that's not included in the sale. Retake them as necessary. One thing to note, though, don't try to hide problem areas. In fact, take photos specifically of the problem. As a buyer, I get very suspicious when I visit a boat and discover that a book just happened to hide a stain on the upholstery in the picture. I wonder what else the seller is trying to hide and tend to walk away. Now, once you have all the photos, edit them as necessary. Delete the ones that are blurry or otherwise bad and pick the best ones. And for the good ones, I'm not saying to Photoshop them and alter what's there. But crop them if helpful. Also, add arrows or circles to point something out if it's not immediately obvious. Give the photos names that clearly explain what something is. If the online listing lets you capture photos, do that too. Seeing photo one, photo two, photo three in a whole listing just doesn't tell me a thing about what you're trying to show. I like to be able to go back and look at particular highlights, particularly if Dave and I are suddenly looking at things together and one of us remembers something the other one doesn't. Okay, do you use a video or not? Well, if you're going to use video, my feeling is that it should be in addition to still photos, not in place of them. Frankly, Dave and I have never seen a video that was particularly helpful. We prefer still photos where we could look at one for a while and discuss what we saw. If you opt for video, it's better to narrate what is being shown than have music in the background. I tend to prefer an edited video with narration edited post-production than someone trying to talk and film at the same time. Now let's turn to the description of the boat. Depending on where you list it, you'll have different limitations and formats. I strongly recommend having a separate document that can be sent to interested parties that lists absolutely everything about the boat. I've put a link to my, what I call a boat details document, that's in the show notes. Now, if you can, save your basic document as a PDF so that no one can alter the document on you. Now, from your complete list, create your description or give it to the broker for them to do the same. If you're selling it yourself, and only have limited space to describe the boat, try to hit the big ticket items that make your boat attractive, such as electronics, dinghies included, a rebuilt engine, new sails, whatever. 
If it's a production boat with many built, there's no need to rehash features common to all if you're short on space. And if you're not confident of your writing skills, or if you're not a good speller, ask a friend who is for help. Spelling in particular is important as people enter search terms, and if a word isn't spelled correctly in your description, it won't show as a match. Now, the listing itself. If you're working with a broker, ask them to tell you the minute it's online and immediately check it for accuracy as well as for how well it shows your boat. Insist that any inaccuracies be corrected immediately. Yacht World, which most brokers use, lets people set up alerts for new listings, and these tend to be people or their brokers who are serious buyers. Don't let them see an inaccurate listing for your boat. That's why you have to do this immediately. If you are listing it yourself, enlist a friend to take a look at the listing when it's at the proof or confirm stage. It is just too easy to miss mistakes when it's something you've been working on. A fresh shot of eyes will pick up things you miss. And if your friend is a boater or in marketing, so much the better. Finally, pay attention to how similar boats are listed. For example, we purchased a Gemini catamaran made by Performance Cruising, Inc. On Yacht World, over 90% of these are listed as Gemini in the manufacturer model field. On sailboat listings, they're listed as Performance Cruising. You want yours listed as the others are in that particular place so that people using the search function will find your boat. Now let's go on to showing the boat. Even if it's a broker who is actually showing the boat, it's up to you to ready it. It should be 100% clean, fresh smelling, and clutter free. Prospective buyers will be opening pretty much every locker, so make sure that they are neat and organized. If there's just too much stuff crammed in there, it pays to remove some of it, even if you have to rent a storage unit. If you want people to think that there is plenty of storage space, Make sure that there's a bit of empty space in every locker. This is extremely important in clothing storage areas. Now, if you have any funky head smells, do everything in your power to rid the boat of them. I highly recommend Marine Digest It. It's listed in the show notes. Baking soda and simply airing the boat out will help too. And finally, make the boat look appealing. This is where I'd stage the boat. Lay out the table as though dinner is about to be served. Put fresh flowers on the table. Plump up the throw pillows and open the hatches, assuming it's not raining. Put fresh towels on the head, fresh sheets on the bed, and so on. Absolutely no tools or paint in sight. Good luck on selling your boat. I think with these tips, you'll find that it sells quickly and for top dollar. Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. Did you find it helpful? Then please give us a five-star review in your favorite podcast app and tell your friends.